Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about the Synology Active Backup Solution, specifically for cloud email. Put it in the cloud, they said. It'll be safe, right? Well, for compliance reasons and for other reasons, occasionally people delete things and oops things. And if you don't have a backup of your cloud, then how do you put it back? And sometimes for compliance reasons, you need to back up what you have in the cloud. That means you can store it locally. That's an option. So instead of storing from one cloud to another cloud, why not store it locally? Because that still means it's somewhere else. Years ago, we would have backed up things locally to the cloud, and we still do. And now you can do the reverse. And Synology makes that really easy to do. So I want to cover their solution they have. It's pretty slick, I'm going to tell you. Before we do that, could you click that like button and first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And a couple details I want to get out of the way right up front. This is not sponsored by Synology, but I am doing this demo on a demo unit provided by Synology, the SA3200D. And I say demo unit because that means I have to return it. I don't get to keep it. This is a product we're evaluating, specifically a solution we're evaluating regarding the way their office backup works. Anyways, this system I've done a review on already as far as its failover capabilities and it's up and running and what we've been running the backup on and also uh, simultaneously torture testing it by just randomly shutting it off at night. So it's on sometimes, it's just randomly unplugged when we you know, turn it off at night and I don't mean shut it down properly. I mean, we just flip the power switch because uh, I wanted to make sure it can survive many of these. And so far it's been working for two weeks with lots of random power offs. Now, what is active backup for Office 365. There's two versions. They have the Office 365 one here, and they do have one for G Suite. We're specifically evaluating and testing the last couple of weeks, the one for Office 365. They're very similar and they work really well so far that we have tested. And I'm going to show you exactly a demo how it works. I'm only going to demo the Office 365 one, but the one for G Suite, it's very similar. Like they have a common interface. The only thing really different is how you set them up. The Office 365 one, you basically just have to link it with an Office admin account. And the G Suite one, a little bit more complicated, but they have instructions on there. Um, you basically have to create a specific API key that you tie to it for this particular domain that you want to back up. And then it can do the backups on there. But product-wise, they're extremely similar. So that's, uh, you know, I'll leave links to this, but it's easy enough to find. They got good documentation, which is great. They made it really easy to set up. Now, an important aspect, fear license fees no more. So as long as you have one of these Synology NASs running this station with this uh, service on there, it is a free add-on application for coming with your Synology NAS. Select an ideal Synology NAS, and they have the NAS selection tool where basically it says, how much data do you have in here? And they walk you through how much data and how much you should choose in terms of which models. Pretty straightforward there and seems kind of intuitive. Uh, if you have a very large in mailbox with many, many emails and lots of documents, you're going to need a bigger NAS. It's kind of uh, just a calculation here. Plus, you have to think about retention. So how long do you plan on retaining this? Do you need 30 days, 90 days, 180, one year? Does, are you in a compliance industry that has certain rules and keeping this, you know, all stacked up there? You may want one of these bigger Synology NASs in order to facilitate a large amount of data in there. So those are all the different considerations. They have a lot of links for that to kind of help you, guide you through picking it out. But like I said, it's a little bit intuitive of, uh, it's already supported on Synology NAS, there's no license fees, and this goes for Office 365 and the G Suite one. And uh, that makes it really, you know, interesting. One, you're grabbing a hold of copies of your data so they're not just sitting in the cloud. You have access to them, and we'll show you how you can, you know, look at that access and dive into it. And uh, if you didn't want to host this in your office, you could buy one of these rack-mounted technologies, put it in a data center somewhere, and uh, pop it in there and keep having it do its thing somewhere so you have it in your own private data center. But a lot of people are probably just going to run this um, in their back room of their office as a solution. And, of course, 
as I've talked about the Synology uh, in a video I did recently about the Synology solution, which I'll link below, it's not the only thing that this device does. So if you set it up for this, you can still use it for other features. All right, on to the demo, now that we've covered all the errata there. And we have our friend Hans at Detroit Yodeling Company. And this is a demo account you may have seen, the DetroitYodelingCompany.com that we've used for a few different things. And, you know, we had to put a few things in here, including um, some cat stuff, you know, because that is there. Not only, oh, this one got caught up in the spam filters. Um, what else do we have in here? Modern Cat Magazine, How to Socialize Your Kitten. Uh, so we made sure we put some email in there. Basically, we signed up for cat things because that seemed like the more fun way to do it. And some of them went right to junk, junk mail, apparently. So let's go through here and we see there's not a whole lot of email, but you're going to get the idea. We're going to go ahead and uh, delete whatever we do have left in there. So delete. Eh, whatever. All right, now we have nothing in this inbox. And let's go all the way back over here, Synology. We don't really need to look at that part. And here is the task list. We do realize this was backed up at 8.25 a.m. on 9.4. Now, if you look at the overview, uh, we actually had this powered off a couple days, but these are also that random unplugging and plugging we've been doing of the box to try to, you know, see if something broke or see if there's a problem with it. But it's been backing up whenever we have the box on, and it's not been a problem. Now, we have this set up to be a continuous backup for the one user. Um, one site and this does support though multiple sites multiple users so if you want to create one like go here office 365 next it wants to tie to the account it's going to take a second here there's our hans and i believe hans is the admin oh need admin approval um you have the log of the admin account sorry hans isn't the admin so you'd log in with the site admin account for this one and that's as easy as it is to tie together another box or another uh, part that you want to do and like i said you could do this for you can have one synology box and maybe for an it provider you want to be the synology system and back up multiple companies to yours that's the solution we're looking at so it's not like you need a one-to-one -one ratio of one synology for one company one synology solution one active backup setup and multiple different companies can be backed up to one so kind of cost justifies buying a very large synology for this so the setup, like I said, it is pretty straightforward. Um, then you have different options when you're doing it. Do, what do you want to back up? Drive, contacts, mail, calendar, archive, mailbox, my site, enable for the portal. Uh, the portal is the separate part. So the way Synology does this is you have the main part that we're in right here, and then it always creates another login. This is sometimes a little bit confusing um, when you first get into Synology. You have the functional server side, the backup program where we tie all the accounts in. Then there's the portal, and these portals are separate logins that you can create. And this also allows for some self-serviceability. I'll link to my video on active backup for business where it backs up workstations, which is still called active backup but it says for business because it's specifically made for like backing up files on local computers and it's a great solution that one we really like and have uh, some clients using it that really like the fact that there's a portal for the users to do things and that same format is how they set this up for office 365 and google you have the main backup in the back end you as the administrator sets up and then you can set up a portal for other people to be able to manage if that's something you want it's not always something you want but you know what if uh then we see the different ones in here we have a couple of people at Detroit uh, Yodeling Company in here, and we can check what we want backed up, the site, et cetera, some of the things, continuous backup, manual backup, schedule backup. Uh, we did continuous, which just seems to check on a pretty regular basis. It doesn't tell me just how continuous it is. I don't think it does. It says within a few minutes. Um, I, it seems to just kick off the job at a pretty constant rate. So that's if you want to do it that way, or you can just do a scheduled backup. It kind of depends on bandwidth and load and um, things like that. That's going to be an issue. And a reason I brought up data center is we have some clients that just have so many mailboxes and so much, you need a lot of bandwidth in order to back that up, especially even if you did it nightly, pulling all the differential changes based on the number of people they have. Well, it can be a little bit daunting if you don't have a fast connection. So uh, that's why it's kind of a nice option. Now, number of days for historical versions to be preserved. That's easy enough. Uh, we put 30 in there, but put in whatever the retention policy is and how much storage you have. Now, let's look at the portal itself. Now, you get to the portal is going to be Active Backup Office Portal, and there's what the portal looks like. So, we choose the person, which we've got Hans. We'll select. 
And these are the different things in Hans mailboxes uh, for archives and inbox. And what this allows you down here to do is make jumps in time to what the mailbox looked at at different points in time. So we can say, all right, we want to know what the mailbox looked here. Here's when that test share was versus, you know, the modern. Then we can jump to what now, and here's some of the things that were in there. But we actually just deleted them, so it hasn't synchronized again. Like I said, it takes a few minutes. Uh, when it's synchronized again, those won't be there. But let's go ahead and put them back in there. I'll show you how that works. We're just going to go ahead and uh, restore them. Where do you want to restore them to? And it'll automatically create this archive restore. So user that. And I like the fact that it's not actually just shoving it back into the inbox. We're able to push it to that archive restore, and now it's going to upload them right back to that particular user's box. Pretty straightforward and pretty fast. Five of six done, and there we go. Let me go back over here. Refresh the page, make sure it's got it. And there's our one here. What's in here? The inbox. Hey, look, there's those emails that we had deleted before we started, and now we just pushed them all back, and if I can do whatever with them. So I've now managed to be compliant by having a, a copy of these in case someone were to. And this is unfortunately what happens sometimes. Someone sends a phishing email, gets that person's credentials, and starts messing with all their email, either purging it, deleting it, or maybe you have a user that you're worried about this with that they're going to put things in there and delete them because this is constantly backing up. If they do either intentionally or unintentionally delete things, there, there are ways to restore that. Now, let's go back over here to the portal and talk about some other features. Of course, email is the one we brought up, but there's other features such as the drive and the demo here. We can do the same thing with this. We can go through. Uh, Kyle's got some stuff in here. I'm not sure what Kyle's got. So uh, Kyle does have this here and what's in the OneDrive. So same thing. So let's go ahead and delete that and we'll uh, delete. All right. Ooh, we'll delete these two. Alien 40th anniversary posters. These are actually kind of cool uh, for the Alien movie, I think, if I had to guess. Kyle grabbed those and randomly threw those up there. I seen one who was looking. And uh, Kyle's uh, one of the staff members here that was helping us with the demo and set this up. So now we want to restore these because somehow they've been deleted. So we'll go ahead and restore. Restore file permissions too. And once again, it's going to put them in this archive backup folder. And now we're just pushing this uh, things right back where they were. Well, not where they were, but to the new location. So I know they were restored. That way I didn't overwrite something existing. Sometimes it's not that you need them restored in terms of they were deleted. It's like, well, this version here seems very different than the previous version. But once again, that common interface we see at the bottom here where it's got the, I can do jumps in time from different locations and it's pretty straightforward as far as restoring it. So it's 25 restored so far, 71%. And almost done, and it'll be pushed all back up into the cloud. Well, we've pushed up 209 megs so far. I'm just going to hit hide, but it'll keep doing this in the background so we can carry on with the demo here. So it's restoring those files. Now, the other things that are able to back up here, and we'll go back over, we've got site backup information. So it's got a couple different ways you can look at it. So this is a communication site. You have the contacts that can be backed up. There's no uh, contacts except for one. And we've got the calendar events we can back up. And I don't think we really have much. Oh, we subscribe to the cat newsletter. So once again, you can restore the calendar. Now let's jump back over to the email to cover one more aspect of this that I think is really slick. What if I want to look at these? I can. That's actually pretty neat. So it's not just the ability to restore. I can uh, restore folders, you know, that's the other pull down here, restore it, but I can also export it. And they're just put in EML uh, format. Now, I only have associated with this um, just to open it in a text so you can view this, but you can uh, take a .EML and import it into something else if you wanted to view these emails. And this is also a nice feature if you needed to go through and look at some of the history, look at the scent and maybe view them, but not necessarily restore them and do this all as an administrator to try to sort something out of what was going on or what's going on in the back end um, and be able to look at that. So definitely um, really nice that they've got those features like that. And it's not too difficult of an interface. So I'm going to say it's rather intuitive just to be able to jump between any of these. And the contacts one, I'm looking forward to because we have a client who recently, um, well, not recently, 
but many times, including recently, has deleted all their contacts. They're not sure what events lead up to it, um, but they've definitely oops a couple times trying to clean things up. And it's going to be nice to be able to push some of those contacts back. And once again, everywhere you go is kind of the same thing. You've got the ability to export this contact and it exports them to CSV. So there's, you know, if you're moving things around, it's uh, discard. I had something else in there but it'll let you uh, pull in the contacts to a CSV if you want to export them for viewing or go back and start restoring them. And once again, it always puts some archive restore so you know where they're doing. So common interface. Now this common interface works across G Suite as well, but I didn't take the time to set up the demo for G Suite because most of the people we have that need this and that we're demoing this for are going to be using it specifically because they need backups of Office 365. And we kind of like the Synology system is a nice way we're looking at to be able to do all these. Like I said, rather than cloud to cloud backups, having cloud to local, we have easy access to all this email for compliance. And of course, with Synologies, you can tie this together with another Synology so you have Synology backing up that and then copying all of that to another one. Or you could even have two different Synologies pulling down the data from Office 365 if you wanted, because for each Synology, you can set this up on each one of them. So I think it's a pretty slick system. And all the testing we've done has actually gone really well, both with the random unplugging of the system and having it recover. The continuous backup of all the emails that are super important for Hans at Detroit Italy Company, all those cat emails, uh, no problems backing them up and restoring them. Uh, it's every time worked, every time we've deleted the box, that's why you've seen a handful of other tests on there. Then we've deleted some of the tests. We've deleted and reset this up. We've tied it to some other accounts um, for other demos that were bigger. Um, Hans is something I can share because, well, that's something we set up and made up in our own head. Uh, so there's no privacy concerns sharing and setting up and testing with Hans. I may move Hans over to a uh, Gmail account and try sending it up over there too, depending on if there's much of a difference. But like I said, I haven't, I, other than looking at the Gmail one, it looked pretty much the same interface, the same methodology. So I'm not positive there's any quirks in it. The little bit of testing seems like it works other than it's a little bit more steps because of the way you have to create an API key. Uh, but if you're interested in this, all the requirements are is the Synology. Um, and they have their little selector, so you can pick which ones are for, right for you based on sizing. Um, and as I said, this was not sponsored by Synology, so I have no affiliate link or discount, especially because it's free. It comes with Synology. Um, but I do have links to my Amazon store if you'd like to buy a Synology from the Amazon store. Or if you need help setting things up, this is uh, also services we offer here. As I said, you know, if you want to hire us for projects. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.